For the first week will be Ingrid Fernandez, be evaluating Elliot Holtzman Steve. Uh, Elliot works as a CAS coordinator in the National Customer Rebates team, been full time for about two years now. His current hobby is to have as many hobbies as possible. That's <laughs> <laughs> one hobby that his wallet does not approve of. And this will be project three, get to the point, will be a five to seven minute speech. And the title of his speech is Made to Stick. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Kelly. thing when I think of when I think of sticking something would be duct tape because it's amazing stuff. You could you could stick anything and you can make it stop. But you cannot do that with intangible items such as ideas, conversations, and overall communication. So there's a book that came out called Made to Stick, providing you bullet points of ideas on how to make your ideas more sticky to other people. Mind, and that way it doesn't fall off during those nasty brainstorming sessions. Mm -hmm. Now, from reading the book, a little bit snippets of it, I came up with three bullet points that I would like for you to be aware so that throughout your day, throughout your communications, work, or at home, you'll be able to more readily available stick those ideas and concepts to others in a good way, right? So, made to stick is formulating communication in ways that are simple and memorable. That's pretty much the gist of the idea. And the three bullet points that I really want you to be cognizant of is to be get, getting to the point, be concrete, and be credible. Now, to get to the point, I thought of a great example from the book that we can all kind of work through together, and it puts us in a journalistic mindset. And usually journalism, we think of the truth seekers going out, kind of doing this FBI investigative, <laughs> kind of like law and order. However, I want to show you this example so we can see what it truly means to be jokes. A lot of words here, so I'll work with you. Kenneth L. Peters, the principal of Beverly Hills High School, announced that the entire high school faculty will be traveling to Sacramento next Thursday for a colloquium in the new teaching methods. Among the speakers will be an anthropologist, Margaret Mead, college president, Dr. Robert Maynard Hutchins, and California Governor Edmund Pat Brown. That's a pretty good paragraph. That gets you the idea of what's going on. However, let's see if we could pull out the exact details that we think that people should know. Any stranger, you could just walk right up to them, tell them those points, and they'll know. So the five facts we do see from that paragraph is Kenneth L. Peters is a principal of a high school. That's good, we can know his name. <laughs> we also know that the faculty is traveling to Sacramento. Unfortunately, they're not taking me along. <laughs> There's a meeting regarding new teaching methods. That's always a good idea. That's something that I could think that a stranger can know when providing them the point. An anthropologist and college professor will speak at that meeting, and I heard that it is Toastmaster quality. And lastly, the <coughs> California governor's middle name is Pat. Okay? More to talk to <laughs> now, can anyone pull one fact that they want people to know from this list? What do you think is the most important? Learning Sacramento. Teaching, <laughs> teaching methods. Method. I heard Sacramento. Teaching, teaching method. method. Teaching method. Teaching method. Anyone else? Teaching method. Teaching method. What if I told you all of you were wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that clicker? <laughs> <laughs> we want to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> we got to the point. Now we can add all of that information in whatever order we want right after. This is our lead in journalism, and that's our punchline, that's our getting to the point. Oh, that's funny. The second is to be concrete, and that is to ensure that ideas can be easily grasped and remembered later. And these two bullet points I like is to connect a diverse audience. Concrete is a good foundation, right? People have yeah. known, right? <laughs> so we kind of want a good foundation when we're talking to a diverse audience of anyone from different countries, English is a second language, different generational gaps. I still do that texting, texting stuff, so you gotta know the acronyms for LOL, right? Mm -hmm. And 
And that means that you need a concrete message that is easily adaptable to all of your audience, or at least as much as possible. And in order to do that, the second part would be that your message is memorable. And what does that mean? It means that specific thoughts can be can trigger memories that you once had before. And there are two differences. There is the concrete and the abstract. And I'll go through a couple examples. Everyone think of a bicycle. I hope you're thinking of something with two wheels. <laughs> about right. Now think of the word trust. <coughs> Anyone got that in your mind? Is it a good trust? Or are you thinking of a time of trust broke and your friend didn't really stand up for you? Or are you thinking of a bank trust? That's more of an abstract thought. How about, think of the first line from the song, Hey Jude. Right? You're all thinking about it. You're probably thinking about it in Paul McCartney's voice, too. <laughs> How about Kansas City? Think of the capital of Kansas City. Is anyone from such a No? Well, to us who are not from there, to us it's just another city. But to someone who is there and who lived there for the majority of their life, it might be something that either means home or a place they want to run away from. <laughs> and lastly, your message should be credible. And you can make credible information truly by having credible resources, having a backup, having some sort of verification. And here's a little snippet from the book. In 1999, email was around in 1999, by the way. An email message circulated about infected bananas from Costa Rica. They were saying that there's some sort of flesh-eating bacteria, by eating it, your flesh will eat itself kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you will pretty much result in amputation or death, and everybody panicked. It was a massive panic. And then at the bottom of the email, it said that it was distributed from the Mannheim Research Institute. And everyone kind of sucked there for a second, like, is that a really credible resource? Or were they just sending that email to see how viral this thing would go? Just like on Facebook, we could see that if a post becomes viral, we could see the trends of how it's sharing and how people are panicking or, re or reacting to it. If it were to go from the FDA or CDC, we'd get a lot larger kind of epidemic thing going on. So we could see here that the higher authority would give more credibility. Make sure that communication has some sort of verification. In that. So lastly, we heard that we want to be straight to the point, we want to be concrete, and we want to be credible. So I want to show you an example of how not to do that. And let's see if that you can pick up those little pieces <coughs> throughout this little speech.
the timer can only have two minutes for the evaluation, please. 